What's up everyone? It's the NFL wine guy, Will Blackman here, and today I'm here to break down the wines from this month's Wine MVP subscription box. It's game time. Okay, let's kick it off. I am excited for you to try these two wines that I selected for you for this month's subscription box. In a formal tasting, we start with white and work our way up to a red. So, let's start with the white wine. The wine I selected here is from the region Rui, which is in Burgundy, France. Now, I'm sure you're looking at the bottle, you're like, where is the varietal? Well, in France, they never put the varietal on the label. You should just know based on the region what the grape is. So in Burgundy, there's only two varietals that they're really known for, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So if you see a wine from Burgundy and if it's red, it's Pinot Noir. If it's white, it's Chardonnay. So in this case, we have a white wine, Chardonnay. Uh, the great thing about this one, uh, the producer, Marie Jacquesson, she actually never submits her wine for scores because she doesn't care. She thinks her wine is that good. She never submits it to scores. And if you go to any French three-star Michelin restaurant, they all have this wine on their list because it's that good. It competes with some of the best. So let's get right to it. Already look at it, really good color. Yellow, gold, you can see right through it, really good. Uh, you get some really cool like mineral notes, some good, you know, that butter flavor, really complex. What's interesting is, when I was a beginner novice drinking wine and Chardonnay, I used to think they put butter in the Chardonnay. That's where they got the flavor from. But studying and learning about it, I found out that there was a process called malolactic fermentation. What is malolactic fermentation? It is a process where the wine goes, this ferm goes through this fermentation and it produces dairy-like flavors, hence the word lactic and malolactic. So that's where you get like the buttery, creamy notes in there. So that's what's interesting about this and, and what makes Chardonnay super cool. Yeah, and then I know I have a spit bucket here, but it's not happening. So this wine is so good. Already, because Burgundy is a cooler region, a lot of, lot of acidity in this wine, hence your mouth starts to water. Really cool, really love the butter flavors, full body, coats my whole mouth. I pick crab cakes and salmon, but it also goes really cool with poultry, chicken, turkey, any of those things. And so wine number one, Chardonnay from Rui, Burgundy. All right, let's get to wine number two. We are in Burgundy. Now we are going to California, where I am. Uh, this wine here, Chateau La Lugri, episode number two. This is a California red blend. Uh, the producer is James Pendergrass. He had a really interesting story. He was in the tech industry do, doing very well, left the tech industry and went all the way full fledged into the wine industry. He is the winemaker. He does everything. Um, and he's, he was excited to share this wine and let me use it. Uh, he, he's just really, really cool. So he gets his grapes from all over Napa. He sources it from Oakville, Oak Knoll, and Spring Mountain, some of the best areas. He has really great relationships where he has access to all the best grapes you can find and so i was really really excited to share this wine with you guys as well so here let's take a look at this wine great ruby color great purple color in the middle um just awesome great staining on the glass okay let me tell you something i, I want to share something so when you see the tears on the glass this does not mean the quality it says nothing about the quality. It's about the residual sugar and the body. That's all it means. That's it. Okay, I know how to get out the way. Anyway, so now, oh, the great aroma is great chocolate and, and strawberry and, 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 you know, some, some cherry. Uh, just super cool. Really elegant perfume. Yeah, I like this one a lot. And then the flavors, man, is just, once again, confirming cocoa, confirming the cherry, confirming strawberries, uh, some kind of like licorice, vanilla, just really cool. And then the alcohol is nice. You'll get, you'll feel it here warming up. It doesn't burn, but it warms up pretty, pretty cool. Um, 
the great thing about this is that usually when I have a wine that's that has a blend, lots of tannins, but this isn't crazy tannic wise. And the tannins are, it's the dry feeling in your mouth. So when you say tannins, that's what's dry. People say, oh, this wine is dry. Dry is usually describing uh, how much residual sugar. So if the wine is sweet, if it's not sweet, then it's dry. So tannins, that dry feeling. And this wine, uh, the tannins are not super strong. It's drinkable now. And with this, it makes me want a ribeye of some sort of steak. So on your trading card, again, I put grilled ribeye, braised short ribs. It's really, really awesome. Uh, one thing I want to mention too is that the blend, it's Cabernet Franc, it's Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, and Merlot. Those also can be justified as a Bordeaux blend. So once again, pick up your tasting notes, take your notes on wine number two. That would be the Chateau Le Loup Gris. So there it is. Thank you for joining me today as we got to learn more about these two wines. I know you're going to love them just as much as I have. And if you have not joined our monthly subscription club yet, go to the winemvp.com. Subscribe. It's $79.98 a month. We are already working on the wines for next month's subscription box. So sign up today and get to learn about incredible wines. And you get to learn from me, Somalier, and the Super Bowl champ. Thank you. <laughs>